Adventure Manor Dungeon World playthrough of a Pathfinder, uh, not Adventure Path, Pathfinder module. Let's uh, let's find out what everybody's been up to. Uh, Thor, how are you doing? I am doing pretty well at the moment. I've been playing, as per usual, quite a lot of get a lot of games recently. Like for instance, the wonderful start of Apocalypse World on Monday, which you should totally check out. It was great fun. Yeah, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, if you click Thor's face, aka Ella Damry, right now, you should get a link to Apocalypse World. That's where something play- that they'll do. Yeah, where I am playing a character who is totally not Harlequin. <laughs> In no way, sh- okay, I am. But yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank. You. Awesome, awesome. Jim, how are you doing? Doing well. I'm. I'm actually like home, home now, <clears throat> which oh, is shit. nice. And I've been playing a crap ton of Mass Effect Two in the last couple days. Yeah, I heard about that. How Mass Effect Two going? is probably the best Mass Effect. What? What? Gameplay wise, it is solid, and the story mm. still holds up. Mass Effect mm. One has the best story. Three is like, eh, all right, it's all right. I didn't play Leviathan because it's like, okay, I beat it, I'm done. Uh, Leviathan, Citadel, and Afterlife are all incredible. Citadel is beyond amazing. Yeah, too bad the Ghost Kid turned me off of the whole franchise. Yeah, there's an alternate ending. Where you're it's just like, not an alternate the ending. Kid. It's like, fuck more... the Ghost Kid, man. Yeah, if fuck you're the ghost seriously, kid. are you kidding me? You play a hundred hours of Mass Effect and you cry because the last five minutes were bad. Boo-hoo. You just had the greatest experience of your life. This is a blind playthrough for me, so... We're not spoiling anything. Shut up, Jim. Tell us how you're doing this week. I'm doing fine. (laughs) Listen, Jim, you killed Rex, you fucking monster. (laughs) I did kill Rex. Rex. You killed Actually Rex? shot him in the back of the head You're a monster. while you I was trying to talk him diplomacy. down. You didn't put enough points into diplomacy or intimidate, you monster. monster. I had like five monster. in both, but you apparently that was insufficient. I was pissed, because Rex was a bro. You know that you have to keep one of those maxed. Monster. I was working on getting them both maxed. and No, nah, can't do that. you got to pick one or the other. Oh, wait, about three quests later, I had them both maxed out. That's why you do Vermeer last. Mm. But again, it was a blind playthrough, so... Don't worry, you'll go back through all of it again. Yeah, you'll just New Game Plus everything. One I New Game Plus. Play Finish. as Femme Shepherd with red hair like a fucking badass. Yep. Jennifer Check. Hale! Jennifer Hale. Alright. Anything else happening with you, Jim? Now that we've uh, ruined your life. Uh, I your don't playthrough. think so. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Dan, how are you doing? I'm alright. I've I'll be honest, Ghost Kid really did turn me off the whole franchise. I was like, yeah, I'm done with three. But I am prepping to run Way of the Kieran tomorrow. So for a local group. That was so, so. fantastically complicated. Uh, it sounds pretty simple. Like, if you've run, uh, like, I've already run uh, Quest for Perfection Part 3 and other things. Let's see, what else did we require defense points? Oh, yeah, the Signs of the Sky Key Part 3, so. Yeah. Let me tell you, man, we did, we did, like, ten runs online of uh, Way of the Kirin the week it came out. And we were doing them for, like, everybody. People were like, I'm not going to be able to make it to my store in time. I want to play Way of the Karen right now so I can know what's going to happen to the Lantern Lodge. Blah, 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 blah. I want to make sure my character gets retired. Yeah, too bad none of those things carry any weight anymore. Because one boon requires another boon from a retired scenario. And the other boon requires that you're a member of a retired faction. Yeah, but it was so important to get your master prestige thing at the time. I didn't even know Pathfinder existed at the time. See? What a rookie. You got anything else going on besides running Way of the... I don't know. Man, that thing was so dumb. Way of the Catapult? <laughs> <laughs> Whole house is just going to be on fire anyway. Yeah, 
probably. I mean... You know, I'm checking this. I think Way of the Kieran might be one of the first scenarios I ever ran. Really? Wow. As a GM, yeah. Yep. That, it that. was actually one of the first I ran as a GM, too. Wow, props to both of you. Fucking rookies. I but, I yeah, I uh, played with this group, like, earlier in the week, and I've played with them before. Like, yeah, unless I do some serious hand-holding, the house is going to be on fire. The yeah, supposed to be on fire. Care. It's fun. No, way it's going to be on fire with them inside. Yeah, that's... Cool. Yep. You're hitting <laughs> no, all of the things inside. that are normally true. With them inside, unconscious. Yep, I had that happen. And as if well. they make it out, and if we're playing high tier, you bet your ass I'm sending the optional encounter at them. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after Jade Regent. No spoilers, but everybody who's watched Jade Regent knows what I'm talking about. Listen I'm fairly this. certain. Listen, to this hater. <laughs> <laughs> I, ran I can it on some low tier though. Hmm. Way of the Kieran was, in fact, the first scenario I ever ran in PFS. I just looked it up. All right. All right. Wow. So. That, uh, yeah, internship, whatever. Yeah, let me uh, mark on the time here. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to hop back in here. I'm going to skip talking about my stuff because no one cares what I do. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I'll tell you what. We're, we're running a secret shot around test group tomorrow night we'll see how it turns out and if i can fit it in my schedule if so you could be looking at a new thursday night show i'm not completely sold on it yet but we'll see uh so there it is shadow run thursdays it could happen check the schedule uh if i remember correctly our team of ella Damri, our noble fighter frederick william mayfield the 14th a bard with a mysterious past and Enkeresh. A sort of drugged out wizard. <laughs> He's high on magic. Uh, open the door to the kitchen and the smell of sweet, sweet lamb. Is that correct? Does that sound right to everybody? We did. We were standing in the kitchen. Right, the lamb. That was the big cliffhanger. Yeah. Yes, lamb. yes. The yes. secret of the lamb. The secret of the lamb. Well, very well. You're about to learn the secret of the lamb because... In the stew pot on the eastern wall, you taste the smell of some delicious cooked lamb. There's a door to the east that leads out to a small patio and a fire pit, and a short door to the south that leads back into the uh, dining room you already came from. The kitchen seems otherwise unremarkable. A few tables for prep. A small stool on the southern end. What would you guys like to do? I believe uh, mm. uh, Frederick William Mayfield XIV uh, was still concerned about what was uh, the so uh, what what was causing the noise coming from upstairs, and was keen to find a way to get upstairs to yeah that noise. Yeah. Still looking for the bloody stairs. Oh. Uh, but there's an actual lamb cooking that seems slightly out of place. Given the, the zombies that were cooking it, yeah, that does seem a little they don't strange. Need, they don't need food, do they? That's why it seems a little strange. No, I'm actually asking you. I don't know shit about zombies. It sounds but, like one of you might be spouting lore. Unless Ella Domri is literally just asking Frederick William Mayfield the Fourteenth, I'm pretty much asking him to spout Lord. Tell me about zombies. Do they, they don't need to? <laughs> oh, I was talking the whole time, but I was muted. Neat. Oh, awesome. All right. But yeah, it's like so, the zombie mates are also the zombie cooks. Spouting lore is intelligence. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Spout that lore. Drop that lore, fool. Looks like you rolled a nine. Allow me to consult my amazing book. I can tell you something interesting. It's on you to make it useful. Interesting. Let's think about this for a moment. What do I want to make you know about? And what specifically are you trying to spot lower on? Whether zombies need food? Uh, zombies definitely do not need food. They like to eat the flesh of the living. But it's simply an instinct. 
Could it perhaps be possible that these zombie maids were also zombie chefs as well? Perhaps. Well, Might be able to spout lore on that possibility. Okay. Uh, roll good. Yeah! You got a 14. Yeah, uh, you would put together your knowledge of uh, zombie lore to know, uh, in addition to the zombies that you fought, and what you already know of them being Juju zombies, that specifically, they were probably brought back to life simply to remain as waitstaff here. Because if you remember, all they did was mutter about cleaning and cooking. So they were just continuing the things they'd done in life as zombies. Okay. Kind After of we funny. find out what the thumping upstairs is, we should definitely come back here. No point in letting this lamb go to waste. You're not just going to take the mm. lamb? I, I'm actually... I'd actually I mean, like it's to take, simmering. I'd actually like to take a look around and see if there's, like, a huge pile of food somewhere in the corner or right outside as if they've been doing this for days and... Yeah, there, there is such... I mean, they've got, like, flour that's on top of the tables dusting everything... There's a container of cornmeal out. There's um, a bouquet of dried herbs like sage, some crushed pepper in a container. There's like table salt. You think that you could probably, if you divided it all up with that cooked lamb, you could probably get two dungeon rations out of this. Oh, cool. So oh, that that is cool. But uh, what I was what I uh, was trying to say is, are there like you know. Do I see any spoiled leftovers as if they've been doing this every day for, like, a while, or, or if this is a one-off occasion? Hmm. That sounds to me like you're looking closely at the situation, right? Like, perhaps you're attempting to discern realities. I guess I am. Why don't you roll plus wisdom? Nine. Excellent, excellent. So you get to ask one of the questions from the chart. For those of you at home, of course, you can continue to follow along with us at DungeonWorldSRD.com. Just uh, open back up this lovely chart that I just closed for, for no reason, because I pressed the wrong button. Uh, hmm. What happened here recently is basically what I'm going for. Is do, does it look like this is this is some sort of daily ritual and? Uh, oh yeah, recently, in and out of here for weeks, possibly months. This place has seen daily use. You don't see any spoiled food, but uh, what happened here recently was that three meals a day were cooked. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Trying to establish a timeline on the disappearance. Okay. Cool. What do you do? Mm. Well, I think we should probably, you know, let the lamb simmer a little bit. It's, it's already cooked. It's... it's already cooked. Is it still on the pot, though? Uh, it's roasting above the fire, but it's definitely done. No well, you could pull yeah. it off, season it with those herbs, and get two uses of dungeon rations. Yeah, why not? Never turn down free food. <laughs> well, food that's about to be spoiled, as far as we know. Mm, yeah. I sp suppose one of you could check and find out if uh, if the zombies have added anything bad to it. If you guys I, sort to know that. I highly doubt it. Yeah, probably. As I'm I put sure on my fine. green sunglasses to cancel out all the purple. That's right. You did mess up the magic in the area, and you're seeing purple. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I have a pair of green shades, just in case. I will. Um. I will put a pinky in the stew and give it a little taste. Yeah, it's it's definitely done. It's missing seasoning. Obviously, it's a little bland. The lamb, however, is delicious, and obviously the fat that is roasted off of it has given the stew a lot of flavor. Uh, Could you <clears> use some salt? 
maybe some sage, you know, oregano. Are mm -hmm. those spices readily among, available in among the... the spices we yeah. found on the counter? Yep, in that and dried I will, uh, spice bouquet. Are you guys hungry? I could eat, but, you know, there's still thumping going on upstairs. Yeah. I'd rather not, you know, have a seat down and then suddenly get get ambushed. Hmm. Sort of like to look or look this place over. I mean, if we're, gonna, to eat. if we're gonna take lunch, I could prepare spells again. Well, I mean, the slam is basically done. We don't want it to go to waste. I mean, just a few little finishing touches are all that are needed to to complete a, a, a quite a elegant meal here. Or we can salt it and pack it for later. Or we could do that. I will start doing that. Okay. Next. Yeah. It's done. Okay. Perhaps we should carry on with our task at hand then, since we're not taking a break for lunch. Yeah, I don't really feel comfortable doing that in the house where. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable. Literally, just been attacked by zombies. So what do you want to do? Let's see what. Well. Let's keep looking for them stairs, then. Yes, right? the quest for the stairs continues. <laughs> okay. As the, the lamb cliffhanger has been resolved. So what do Turned you do? Um, I can't remember entirely what room of the house we're in. Are we at the... Um, You're in the northern... upper right-hand room. That's right. the kitchen. And we, we came in from this room, right? Yep, you came in in the following pattern. Uh, I don't want to use that. Let's go with dark blue. Went in here, came back here, here, here. We moved in this sort of pattern. Okay. Sounds good. Well, seven days. <sighs> I like how Dan's looking around now. Yeah, I'm your camera's out, switch. man. So, south it is, I guess. Go through the big door? Sure. Well, spear at the ready. So you're heading into this particular room? Well, I am. I hope you guys are following me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, are we foregoing this doorway? Or are we just going to go backwards? No, we've already gone in that, that room. We oh, right, out. this is the room we went in and out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We can just, you know, walk You're through this door. You're through there. Sure. It happens. Okay, as you go through the large uh, screen set, you find yourselves in kind of a secondary dining room. It seems to also be a museum. Inside, you see a tasteful menagerie of Flynn's travels and victory packs. This large room. Well, I put the emphasis on the wrong parts of that sentence. Paintings and memorabilia fill the perimeter, and a large glass display case with a prominent lock lies in the front of the room's center. Inside the case rest several rolled maps, a pair of worn leather journals, and a shining iron chalice. A fine painting of Flynn and his four adventuring friends hangs on the eastern wall, behind which a wooden staircase rises to the second floor. Oh, hey. The stairs! The mysterious stairs at last! Oh. We found them. <clears throat> hmm. Is there also a door leading further on to the south? Yes, there is. In fact, allow me to reveal the remaining doors. There is a door to the south and a door to the east that opens to the outside. Okay. Maybe we could get some sort of information out of these journals and logbooks and maps. Yes, as to what he's been doing of late, hopefully. What are these portraits and paintings of, again? Okay, you're looking more closely at the portraits? Yeah. Yes, there are portraits of all five members of the Golden Watch, including mm. deceased wizard Roma B. Cell, cleric Dern Fosimuth with a shining golden sun on his tabard, uh, of course, it's very easy to recognize the Crandalls with their hammer and knives. 
And leading the pack at the forefront is uh, Terrigan Flynn carrying a flask of some kind, preparing to chuck it at some sort of slightly uh, off-screen monster. Like, you see some sort of tentacle arm on the far right hand of the painting. <clears throat> what manner of fighter is he? I don't think we have alchemists in Dungeon World. There are alchemists in Dungeon World. He's one. I thought they were third party. <laughs> but you're, you're forgetting. In Dungeon World, there's everything. There's everything, man. Everything's in Just, Dungeon World. You're, you're limited to player classes. They can do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> True. They can be... You, you, they can't be wizards, but they can be warlocks, arcanists, alchemists, magicians, mages, sages. You name it, they've got it. <clears throat> yep. Witches. It's a fairly impressive painting. Is Each of but, them holds uh... a small fragment of a large golden watch. It is clear from mm. the painting that Flynn appears to be much younger than the rest of his friends. Because he's a half-elf and didn't age as... Yeah. Quickly as the rest of them. Said the mm -hmm. human in the party. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. The elves. To the elves. <laughs> well, that's what his friends, the retirees, told us. Yeah. yeah. So I what's all this? emphasize that memento mori. Oh, yeah. I realize the irony is there. Okay. So what's all this on the table? Uh, the table is a glass display case, and underneath it, everything is stored... In uh, so it's like a locked case, so you could just flip up and open and take stuff out. Inside, you see uh, alchemical discoveries, letters from other adventurers. There are some small, like six by six inch paintings, and several archaeological artifacts. Archaeological artifacts. There also like... appears to be uh, that shining chalice. It glows with its own light. Mm. There are many I arcane mean... sigils around it, and more importantly, those artifacts are interspersed with ancient coins. Could I spout lore about this chalice? Because I realize I spent yeah. detect magic. Yeah. You no, you can't spend it. Oh, that's right. You chose to forget it, right? Yeah, I chose to forget it, so oh, I can't shit. do it again. Ducky, ducky. Well. Let's Maybe later. Uh, I know nothing about this chalice. Yeah, Mark XP, man. Mark XP. Um, let me look over. I, I gotta figure out what's gonna happen here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You you know quite a bit about this chalice, actually. Oh really? Yeah, you know you know a ton. Uh, this chalice is the the cup of light. You can put liquids into it, and whatever color the liquid is indicates how alcoholic the chalice makes it become in the Roy G. Biv visible light spectrum. <laughs> so red liquids become essentially inert and non-alcoholic, and violet and purple color liquids become extremely alcoholic. Hmm. That is a very specific cup. I like it, though. This is